Hey, UMass fans, welcome to another episode of the Flagship in Focus. I'm Alan Pandiani, your host here on our regularly occurring series here on at UMass Athletics. And I'm super excited today because I'm joined here by Jeff Simpson, the Chief Commercial Officer for UMass Five College Credit Union, which right down the street from our campus here in Amherst, uh, also a proud sponsor of our athletics program, which is awesome. And Jeff, our audience would love to know a little bit about your role at UMass Five and under normal circumstances, what you control and influence uh, with your financial institution on an occurring, regularly occurring basis. Terrific. Hey, Alan, thank you very much for having me. UMass Five is a proud sponsor of the UMass athletic program, as we have been for a number of years. Many people in the community probably know of us. We've been around since 1967, 50 years or so of serving the communities here in the Western Mass, Central Mass area. We've got a robust suite of personal um, consumer product offerings and a digital business center, as well as a, a lot of um, uh, central customized service area. You know, there's a number of people who know of us primarily because we are so tied to the local community as well as the colleges that are in this area. University of Massachusetts being the primary uh, founder, really, of the UMass College. And we wound up founding ourselves several years ago with a, as a the credit union for the University of Massachusetts. And from there, we expanded to include all the other colleges in the areas and eventually to broaden our horizons to incorporate a number of the local um, communities. You know, at the current time, we are the UMass uh, Athletic Program's primary sponsor, which we're quite proud to be. We support you in a number of ways, one of them being the Women's Athletic Program, the Men's Athletic Program. We're sponsor of the um, Chuck a Puck uh, program that you have at each one of the uh, hockey games. We are um, active quite a bit with your uh, local sponsors as well. There's a Hampshire Hospitality who is also a sponsor of your athletic program that we do and work quite closely with on uh, local community events around your sporting events. So we're very pleased to be part of your overall program. That's fantastic. And just a quick question, because for some of our viewers, they may not know the difference between a typical bank and a credit union. Yeah. Jeff, give our viewers just a quick little synopsis of what the primary differences are between a typical bank and a credit union. Yeah, uh, credit unions were formed primarily to, uh, they were owned by their members, right? So those who are depositors or borrow from UMass Credit Union are a member our profits funnel back to the members as well as to the local community. So if we have a dollar's worth of profit, uh, a good percentage of that is going back to our members and the balance is contributed in one form fashion to the local community. And that's the distinct difference. The other uh, community banks and or um, local large regional banks, their profits are funneled back to the uh, shareholders and uh, may or may not find its way to a depositor or a, a borrower at those institutions. Awesome. And Jeff, under normal circumstances, what, what's your typical day-to-day -day like, you know, predating yeah. January 1st, 2020, really? A lot has changed. There's no doubt about that. Um, the UMass uh, Commercial Division, which I had up, was founded back in 2017. And for the most part, we'd been trying to get ourselves off the ground, trying to serve the local business community, fund and sponsor, whether it be with deposit accounts and checking accounts, cash management services, commercial loans of all types. Um, and more recently, due to the COVID crisis, we wound up getting involved in a program called the PPP program. And that is a payroll protection or paycheck protection program that's sponsored and administered by the SBA. In the federal government. Um, we had to do a lot to get ourselves up and running and prepared to be able to funnel funds to businesses that were suffering and really challenged by this environment. Uh, we had really spent a fair amount of time back in early April uh, getting some 125 
of my colleagues, coupled with our board of directors who were adamant about us being part of this program and extending ourselves to the community, making ourselves available to them. And we have wound up doing, I think, a, a very commendable job getting this program and the funding into the hands of the smallest businesses who really are suffering the most uh, through this crisis. Wow. And I mean, my, my family, we've, we have a family owned business in Worcester, Massachusetts. That's this will actually 2021 will actually be its 100th year of operation uh, ever oh, wow. since my family emigrated to the United States from Italy. And, you know, we had to take out PPP money to be able to keep ourselves going through this. Yes. But, you know, we survived the Great Depression. We dis we survived World War II. We're going to survive COVID nineteen. But um, yeah. you know, it, it's been a real boon for the small business community um, and in those that have been able to access it. Jeff, tell our audience a little bit about how business operations have changed for UMass Five and maybe where the priorities are now amidst this national pandemic. Well, you know, there is so much that people don't understand about what the business community is going through today. 96% of the funds that we put out through the PPP program went to businesses that have five employees or less. And these are the people who have kind of been left out in the cold or businesses. And, uh, you know, any large company could get the attention of a large regional bank and get what they needed. It was these smaller organizations that were totally ignored in the process and we made an extra effort to make sure we were available to them. And we reached out in forms of emails, phone calls to, we contacted local area uh, accountants and attorneys and CPAs and, and encouraged them, send us your smaller business uh, owners. You know, a lot of these people are simply looking for some peace of mind. They're scared, they're very desperate, and we, I think, provided that peace of mind and the counsel they needed to know that they were going to get through this. You know, many of them also were just looking for hope. You know, there's scary operation. Your family owns their own business. They know how it is. You know, you wonder, these people are wondering whether or not they're going to have a livelihood when this is all over with. And uh, that's often scary because you're 50 years old. It's all you've ever done and it could be gone tomorrow. Right. And so I think we did, for the most part, we did our, darndest to get out there and let those people know that no matter what happened, we were here for them and we were going to make sure they got the financing they needed to get through this. And at the end, I think we reduced a lot of unnecessary stress for these people. Once we were able to get them on the phone, encourage them, don't worry, we're going to take care of you, walk them through the process, got them their money. I think they're feeling better today and we're going to be there going forward because this process may continue. Who knows? And we'll be there to hold their hand through it. Wow. No. Uh, Jeff, what, what has been sort of the, the thought process from UMass 5 coming out of this? You know, I think a lot is made in the media about what's happening nationally, but if, more specifically in our community right here in Amherst Hadley, you know, the immediate vicinity of campus and by virtue a lot of uh, an area where most all of and a significant portion of the faculty and staff from UMass Amherst live and uh, where they're commuting from to campus in Amherst each day. W what do you see the climate sort of being like as, you know, not knowing when things will get back to normal, but when we are out of this, however you want to say it, what do you think the the climate for commerce is going to be like in our immediate area here in Western Mass? You know, I think it's going to be strong. I think there's one thing we can always say about Western Massachusetts and even Central Massachusetts, being so focused in the educational institutions, we have a, a rather strong, robust economy that's built around those institutions. And as they go, so, don't, so does the local economy. And I do believe that they're here to stay. All these colleges will be up and running again. Quite aside from that, we had built a pretty diversified economy, one that I think will sustain itself through this crisis and on for the next number of certainly centuries. It's really a, um, it's to, I would not know what to say if we were kind of like in upper state New York, it had been devastated by, you know, such of the, a lot of the globalization and the companies moving out of the area. This area, 
I think has retained its strength and will through this, through this challenge. And I want to make one special comment is that the Chamber of Commerce of these local communities, and some of you are familiar with, I'm sure, with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, they're all reaching out. And we, along with them, and your local businesses who are in a position to do so, are making an effort to help the people who need the most help. In your downtown area in Amherst, for example, there's an Amherst Foundation that people can contribute to that is monies that are being funneled to the local businesses in the Amherst community. Northampton has a similar effort going on. The Chamber is a key conduit to these businesses. We have been working through them and with them to help, as have, again, I'm gonna mention another company that you're familiar with, it's uh, Hampshire Hospitality, who have been very engaged in helping these individual businesses. The Log Cabin is another one that we've worked with closely to get meals to the professionals that are on the line serving, uh, doing the difficult work, the dangerous work, and then helping these people get back on their feet. So in the long run, I think it's positive, and it's because everyone's coming together and trying to make a difference for those who most need it. That's great. I know for me, I've, I've just tried to support the local restaurants and eateries as much as yeah. possible. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate that I live in pretty close proximity to Mission Cantina. And I mean, they, they're doing unbelievable business right now. I mean, I don't know what their margins are like compared to under normal circumstances, but over the last 60 days, I've probably ordered from there nine or 10 times. And every single time, you know, they're out of guacamole or there's you know, seven cars in the drive in the parking lot or whatever. So um, even though it's not under normal circumstances, I know at least one restaurant is doing pretty well throughout all this in Mission Cantina. But um, you make a, you make a good point. Everyone should make an effort. These businesses do need the support. And we, too, my wife and I uh, are making an extra effort to make sure we support those local businesses. And uh, it, it makes a difference. It truly does. Awesome. Well, Jeff, we really appreciate the time and having you on today. Once again, for our audience, it's, it's been a fantastic thing for us to be able to hear from you and be able to get a little bit more insight into how UMass 5 is impacting our community here. Once again, Jeff Simpson, Chief Commercial Officer, UMass 5 College Credit Union. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. Alan, thank you very much and good luck to your teams going forward. Awesome. And to all of our audience out there, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week on the next installment of The Flagship in Focus.